This is Jody Brockington. I want to welcome you to the National Urban League Job Network produced show of the National Urban League Digital Career Success Series. Today, we are talking about the art of networking featuring Mark Williams. Mark and I met many years ago, not too many, but long ago, as the Network Journal's 40 Under 40. Since then, we have remained friends, and most of it is due to networking. There's no need for us to, you know, if we hadn't met across paths, to not stay in touch, but both of us are master networkers. And today, Mark is going to share with you his techniques of the art of networking, whether or not you are at the top of your game, just starting out in your career, there's always something that you can do better. And Mark is going to make sure we fine-tune our art of networking by giving you tips about winning over a room, about staying on the top of someone's list, and about getting the things you want, not just out of your career, but out of life in general. So, Mark, we welcome you today and look forward to your presentation. Thank you. Well, first and foremost, I want to thank Jody and the National Urban League, uh, as well as Don and uh, Wanda, for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Now, Jody mentioned that we met a while ago. She didn't want to say when. I'm going to say when because it's it's an honor to be at our 10th year anniversary. Uh, uh, Jody mentioned uh, about the uh, Network Journal. The Network Journal is a magazine out of New York, and it's about probably about 150,000 circulation nationwide. And we were honored and blessed to be on the cover of this magazine that was uh, honoring the top 40 leaders in America not under the age of 40 that are minorities. And uh, Jody and I were on the cover with, uh, with uh, two other amazing people, and uh, they... Uh, Sherry Hines and uh, Keith, uh, Keith Parent, who's the uh, one of the co-founders of Google. And Terry currently is now the uh, vice president of Converse. And so we all met we were in different places in our lives, in our careers. Uh, Julia, I believe, was at the Urban League. I was at Chance, I was at Chance Sports. Uh, uh, Terry was just, she was a manager, of, of, of national manager for uh, Nissan. And all of a sudden, um, you know, 10 years later, she goes from there to Dwayne Jordan, and then now is the, the vice president for Converse. So we met, it was 10 years ago, we maintained an amazing relationship for the past 10 years. And a lot of times people think that when you when you work with, when you meet someone, that if you don't do a deal right away, that um, you shouldn't keep in contact with them. And that's not true. Uh, Jody and I, this is our first time in 10 years that we've known each other that we're actually working together. Um, and I think over the last 10 years, I've watched what she's been doing. She's been watching what I've been doing. And then about four months ago, she said, hey, Mark, you know what? Let's. Let's do something together, and I got the perfect venue for you. And uh, so I want to thank you again, Jody, for giving me this opportunity to, to meet uh, Wanda and Don and be a part of this wonderful seminar. Um, now, one of the things, even though we call the thing networking, I really call this really about relationship building. And people think that, you know, it's this, it's this kind of contrived way to go out meeting people. And I, I really think that you start networking and learning how to do all that when you're a little child. Um, how you're socialized from your parents and how you are, are told what you can do and, and how your mom or your dad give you permission to, to talk to people and interact with people. And you learn it from a, a young person. So, you know, can you still network when you get older? Sure you can. But I think what happens is, especially when you get to college and maybe high school, they say, hey, go on the network. And people don't know what that means. A lot of people are, some people are really shy. Some people are intimidated by the process. Some people don't know what it means. So people walk around like robots, when in essence, you should just be yourself. And I think that when you're being yourself and you're being authentic, uh, it's much easier for people to recognize and remember who you are. And I think that um, when we go through, what I wanted to do was think about all the things that you do when you meet people, step by step. But I, I don't want you guys to be robotic with it. So like when I give you a tip one, I say smile, for example, the first tip, and then you walk into a room and you have a checklist. Well, I smile, and I here's this is how I do it. Now, <laughs> I want you to be natural. The same way if you walk into, I don't know, again, I'm just being, I'm being cynical about it. If you walk into a club, for example, and you just want to hang out with your girlfriend or your guy friend, you're going to be natural. You're not going to sit there and try to be contrived. Some guys, and I, I know guys will probably get so hard when I say this, but some guys may try to run game, right? But maybe not. Maybe they're going to be themselves. But if you're yourself, you know, in that situation, like women tell guys all the time, be yourself, be authentic. Then you'll, 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 you don't have to worry about running game on people. It's the same thing with networking. Don't try to overextend yourself and be more than what you are. Just go and be yourself and let people know who you are. So what I did was I came up with this thing called the tips, top 10 tips for winning over Rome. 
And when you're running over a room, you want to think of what are things that's going to make me memorable. So one of the first things that I think about um, that you want to do is that you, you want to smile. And, you know, when you walk into a room, nothing lasts a room like a great smile. You know, imagine if you walk into a room about 50 people, you see people walking around with grumpy faces. You're not going to want to talk to those people, no matter what kind of event it is. But if you see someone with a pleasant demeanor and you don't know anybody there, more than likely you're going to gravitate walking towards that person because that's something that you want to do. Um, you also want to make sure that uh, people are paying attention when you do say something to them. You want to make sure you greet them, make sure that you want to give the impression that you're happy to be there and that, 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 that it's not something that's forced. Okay? That's number one. You want to always smile when you're there. Even if you're not happy, then you walk out the room and go do something else. But don't walk around with a with a on in your face. So you want to smile and get people to be uh, engaged. Okay. Number two, be confident. Uh, you definitely want to express yourself and be positive and have a good speech of mind um, and to, to people. But you don't want to overextend yourself and speak too much um, to people. Um, you don't want to get too excited so that you um, that you you don't want to be so excited that you focus on. Um, uh, getting getting people, you know, looking around at you like you like you think you don't want them to your folks come. Um, I remember one time we were uh, at a Reebok event when I worked for Reebok, and a young lady who wanted to get, get our business, she was an advertising executive, and she was so focused on, you know, I want to make sure that the CEO knows the face, so I'm going to tell them everything that I know about my, about what I know about the brand. And at the time, Reebok was uh, probably um, maybe six dollars a share. Okay, so they had lost a lot of market share. And they were laying out people left and right. So the step of a woman being empathetic and trying to open in and trying to gauge, engage and reach around, she would immediately went up to the CEO and he was very confident, which is fine, but she started telling the CEO why they're losing money. That's not a good impression to leave with the CEO, especially when you don't know them. You want to be positive and confident, but you don't want to be at the point where you're looking around being overly confident and to the point where you're annoying people. So if you want to be confident, be controlled, and make sure that you, you know who you are. That if somebody said to you, hi, what is your name, where are you from? You should be able to take my name and such and such. It doesn't matter if Barack Obama asks you or if it's the person down the street asks you. You should always know who you are and know what you're about. Never let an environment dictate, you know, who you are as a human being. You can be that human being before you walk in the room, and you can be that human being when you leave there. And that's one of the biggest most common mistakes people make is they walk into an environment, and it's, it can be intimidating. Okay? I'm not going to lie. I've been in situations where I didn't know anybody. It might, it might have been a little intimidating, but the thing is, the more you do, you walk into an environment that you're not familiar with, the more confident you're going to, um, you know, uh, turn into presentation for that two less. And then the third thing is, you want to be passionate. Um, you want to be passionate about something that you're that you're excited about. Um, what are some of the things that inspire and motivate you? You know, you want to be able to speak your mind and at the same time not to alienate people, but you also want to act like you're excited about where you're at. Um, one of the things about my personality is that I'm very passionate about life and passionate about people. So I always want people to, to be excited about what I'm talking about. Now, sometimes yeah, you can be passionate to the point where people you could be annoyed, and you don't want to be in that situation. You want to be passionate but controlled at the same time. So think about it again. You want to smile. Okay? You want to be passionate about what you're doing, and you want to be confident. So when you walk into a room and you see people, yeah, you smile. You know, you're confident about being in that room, and you're passionate when you begin to talk to people about who you are. But again, you don't want to, you don't want to be a control. But you want to be be controlled, but yet not offensive. Okay. Another thing um, you want to use is your personality. A lot of people are afraid to be themselves. Um, one of the things that's helped me in my career. Some of you read my bio. Um, you know, so how in the world did he get an opportunity to do all these wonderful things in his career? I've been blessed. And a lot of it has to do with networking and developing relationships with people. And some of the time, my personality has got me in trouble because maybe I'm too nice or a little too anxious, people might have thought, because I'm friendly and I'm kind. And most people are not used to people being friendly and kind because usually when you're friendly and kind, people think you're up to something or you want something. And that's not always the case. That's just my personality. Jody is the same way. We both are fun, energetic fun, nice people. And when you meet people like that, especially women, when a woman's nice and silly and energetic, unfortunately, because of the double standard, men may misinterpret that and think, oh, she's probably a, a really easy woman. No, she's just a friendly, energetic, outgoing person. And leave it at that, right? And I think it's the same thing for men, too. There were times early in my career 
where my kindness and my, uh, my, my eagerness to wanting to do something may have warped people the wrong way because they were like, oh my God, so why is he so friendly? Why is he so nice? But as people got to know me, they got a chance to see that dynamic of myself. So again, don't be afraid to use your personality. You might have a, a kind of a, a, you know, a, a, a strong personality. You might be quiet and shy. You might be gregarious. You might be proud of Um, You know, you want to always make sure that people are paying attention to you, but at the same time, you don't want to be so so obnoxious that people are looking at you like, oh, my God, this is this person is not what I want to be around. So make sure you look at who you are and what you're about and make and when you are going about your business meeting people that you, you're, you're confident, that you're smiling, that you're passionate about what you're talking about, but also, you know, be yourself. Do not try to cheat for anybody because you're in a different environment, okay? Um, most people are intimidated and nervous when you go to, to a career fair, for example, because if you go to career fair, the career office, or your business school, or wherever you're at, tells you to go network and, and bring your resume, and you're walking around like a robot, and you're not, your personality just doesn't really come out, right? Until you meet one of these outgoing, cool people that kind of talks and makes you feel comfortable, but most of the time, if you go to a career fair and just it's what they're observed. They start watching people. Most people are robots. Just standing there, I got a 3.9. I went to this job. I did this. I did that. People, they, that's nice, but people really want to know who you are when you're talking to people. Just get to know people and be, be personal and friendly. Okay? Um, another one, open-ended question. What do you say to someone when you meet them for the first time? I get this question all the time, and I love doing role-playing with college students um, in general because I'll ask them, you know, um, let's say you want to work in the music industry. And you meet Puffy. What would you say to Puffy if you met him in a cocktail party? And they're like, oh, my God, I don't know what to say to them. Well, kind of should know if they have something to him because you can Google the heck out of him. So you know exactly who he is. You know exactly where he's at. You can talk about it on Instagram and, and uh, Google and Facebook, everywhere, and Facebook and Twitter. You know what he's doing. You know what he's up to. And I think that whether it's Puffy or if it's anybody that you're meeting, or if it's just someone that's a colleague of yours, somebody that's a peer of yours that you've never met before, you know, talk to them and try to ask questions that, that, that if you don't have anything to say, that, that is just generic, that, that if you're curious. Me, my personality, I'm just a, I'm just, I like to know everything. Now, when I walk into a room, do I go out looking, looking around, looking to, to try to just talk to anybody and everybody? No. I kind of, I kind of, it depends on the environment. I survey the room and kind of look at, you know, what is it that I have in common with that person? The most important thing is that when you go to an event, the most important thing that you have in common with that person is that you're both in that environment. Okay, and you're obviously in that environment for a reason. So it should be easy for you to have a conversation. Hey, why did you come here today? Just like I have a few suggestions for that. Okay, what you know, what, what you know, what, what, what you did today. You know, um, how did you get invited? Um, where are you from? You know, and maybe you're in New York, and, and maybe that person's coming out of town for an event. I don't know. Maybe they're not from there. Um, how long did it take you to get here? It's raining outside, man. Can't believe this weather. You know, um, did you grow up in this area? You know, questions like that. You know. Um, because you want to give people that it, the, the impression that you actually care about who they are and why they're there. Um, you don't want to give the impression that, um, you know, that you're just there and you just you don't want to be friendly and personal with people. But if you're not familiar with that person, talk to them. Find out about them. You know, and, and, you, and you know that you're in an event, you got to know your environment too. You know, um, if you're in an environment where everybody seems to be educated and you're, you know, among people that have degrees or not degrees or whatever it is, you can talk to them about college and, hey, you know, what school did you go to? You know, I just tried to wait a presence at school, you know, um, where you talk about what's going on in the news. And, hey, did you see the NBA championship play tonight? You know, they might not be a basketball thing. You can think about what's going on in the news. You want to, you want to always think about things that, 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 that can be a conversation piece and not too controversial. You don't want to talk about politics. You don't want to talk about religion. Stay away from those topics. But you want to talk about something like, you know, something that you saw in the news that was, that was cool, that was different, that was unique. But you want to give the impression that you're curious about who they are. I'll give you an example. The other day I was in Panera Bread, and I was sitting there listening to um, this young lady. She might have been 13 years old, and she was talking to her dad, and you could tell she was very confident. And her mother was sitting to her side, and she said, Mom, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I know we're going to Milwaukee next week, but I, I want to, I really would like to go to Katy Perry. And I was just listening to her, and I'm smiling. And then, uh, the, then she said, you know, but I, but I can't wait to go see Beyonce. I wish we had, we, we can get tickets to go see Beyonce. And then they looked over at me, you know, just casually. And I said, when they looked at me and made that eye contact, I said, just ignore them. And I said, well, they're both, both great women. I love them both. And then the mother and the daughter smiled at me like, okay, like, are you kidding me? Like, that's nice. And I said, no, they're really, they're, they're good people. And I said, you, you love Beyonce and, and Katy Perry? And I'm like, actually, I do. And, um, they're like, okay. 
um, you know, uh, tell me more about that. And I started talking to them about my experiences in, in the music industry. And we wound up talking uh, for about an hour and a half. And it turns out that the father is a, a congressman here in West Virginia. And I didn't, I never met him, but I knew all about this man. We talked about two, two hours. And it was an interesting conversation. And now I now have a really unique, com- a unique relationship with this man and his family now because of that one instance of just communicating with people. Okay. Another another uh, thing is you want to remember names. Okay. Um, when you're talking to someone, you want to give them the impression that you are paying attention to them and that you remember their name. Um, there's nothing worse than you're talking to someone and you're talking to them for a good two or three minutes and you have no idea what their name is. And you say, can you tell me your name again? They've already told it to you maybe once or twice. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you, um, you know, you're communicating with them in a way that uh, that that they that you know their name. One of the tricks that I do is that I take, um, I get on my phone and I make sure that I always have it on notes. And then when they tell me their name, I type it in really fast so that I can report to it. And I'll remember their name. I feel like five people standing around me. I'll make sure that I do that because I'm not always the best person with remembering names. I remember faces really well, but I'm not always the best at remembering names. So for me, what I do is I, I make sure that I type, I, I write down their name. The other thing is that after I finish talking to them and maybe I got their card, I'll write on the back of on the card something unique about that individual. Um, so if I met them and they were tall and they had a beard, I would say tall bearded person or tall woman or a short woman or this person had on a black dress, something distinctive about them. Because later on, we start talking about how you wrap it all up. You want to make sure that when you're going back and talking to people, that you can remember something unique about them and you always remember their name when you go, go up to them, especially if they don't have a name tag on. So the most important thing about, you know, networking, too, is listening. So listening and paying attention to people is very, very important as well. Um, the other thing is, the next next tip is don't get caught up in small talk. Um, you know, one of the things is, you know, you, you want to make sure you have some common, common ground with this person. So have a purposeless conversation, no matter if it's business or it's purpose, personal. Uh, find a point of the connection with the person, uh, which is connected in any way, and listening to them, and talking to them, and facilitating this conversation with them also helps. You don't want to be in a situation where you're just talking about, you know, gee, you know, um, that book looks like it's dirty. Um, you know, that plate looks like it's got some dirt on it. Um, you don't want to get into that kind of jibber jabber conversation. You want to get into some meaningful conversation with that person as, 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 as if you're really interested in talking to that person. Okay. Um, sometimes it can be uncomfortable, but again, if you, if you're thinking about this consciously, then you're not being yourself. You want to, you want to realize, you want to talk to the person, listen to the person, and then you say, well, how do you get out of a conversation with someone that you don't really want to talk to them any longer? Well, I would sit for that too. That's not in here, but that, that kind of will segue into not getting put into small talk. And, you know, one of the things you can say is, you know, hey, when, when you're in this conversation and you're like, oh, my God, this is kind of getting boring and, oh, my goodness, I don't know what else to say, and say, you know what, it was wonderful talking to you. I see a friend over there. I would like to go and talk to that person. Or you can say, can you come with me? Would like to come meet my friend over here with me? And then take that person and introduce them to the next person. That's another way to get me out of that small talk conversation. Um, but you have different options um, to, in order to get out of that. Um, the next thing is your body language, okay? One thing that people detect quickly is, is, is the way you're standing and the way you're communicating, the way you're moving. And you want to turn your body toward the person like you're talking to them. You don't want to, you know, get in their personal space and, like, be all in their face. Um, you know, you don't want to, you know, be in front of them like that. You want to make sure that you, you know, communicate with them in a way that is making them feel comfortable. And I'll give you an example. About a month ago, I was at Clemson University, and I was speaking to the, the football team. And we went out to go, the, 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 the coaches and everyone, we went, out, we went out to go get something to eat at one of the local restaurants in the, in the hotel I was staying at. And the interesting thing was, um, the person, uh, we, we saw the president standing outside. So I said, oh, I know, you know, I know him, let's go out and go to him. So he was following me outside to go talk to, to the president. And he was finishing talking to maybe about maybe 35 alumni. So three of the guys come outside with me, and one of them was standing there with a chance in his pocket, and the arms were slow, but he was kind of nervous, I guess. And the other ones were kind of just standing there, and I said, hold on a second, let me explain something to you. I said, think about this for a second. You are a football player. This is an elite school for football. Everyone knows that you're a football player. Um, everyone, those alumni over there, they probably want to meet you. This is one of the star players. They probably want to meet you. 
I was like, if you're standing there, you know, kind of like watched over and looking at you intimidated, people are going to look at you and not be afraid. To act like you control the wrong. To act like you control the wrong and that you are that you are confident. The same way you command, you know, everyone on the football field. And they go, what do you mean? I say, well, for example, you have the drink in your hand, hold it in your hand, but look comfortable. You can have one here and a half, stand up straight. Act like you belong here, like you've been here before. Because you want people to feel comfortable, like, hey, that person's really in control over there. I, I think I like what that person's doing. Um, you know, it, it gives it gives you that 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 feeling of wow, that person's really really into me. Um, the other thing is making eye contact, so that you feel like you're making that you that you people feel like you're paying attention to them. Um, when you make an eye contact, people know that okay, this person is is really looking to them. Um, one of the things I can give an example on as far as uh, having a great relationship with people, making eye contact. I can remember the first time I ever met Michael Jordan. Okay, when I was in graduate school, I was um, I was uh, I went to a Boston Celtics basketball game. I went to graduate school at the University of Massachusetts. So our school took us to go see uh, the Celtics play against the Bulls. Um, I think this was like the second time Jordan had retired and came back, 1997-98. So this is one of the last times Jordan played. So a couple of my classmates, uh, we went, we were all at the game, and we were in this, this, this um, the, the VIP booth. They come, kind of gave us a tour. But before the game, one of my classmates, his father was a, a vice president of the Orlando Magic. So he took us on the floor to meet, you know, some of the executives on the floor. Meanwhile, we're looking around and we see Scotty Pippen and different people walking around us, but none of us see them except for our friends. So we were kind of out of, out of touch with that. However, I saw to my left this guy, Stuart Scott, who was my fraternity brother. I'm an alpha, right? And I see Stuart Scott. He's an ESPN sports anchor and he always makes references to, um, I wish he always makes references to, to being an alpha on TV. So I recognized he was an alpha. I looked at him. I looked positive. I looked confident. I looked strong. And I gave him my alpha signal, and he came rushing over to me. And we started talking, introduced him to my classmates, making eye contact and looking at him. And then after we had a great conversation, my classmates were ready to go upstairs. And he said, Mark, I'm about to go meet Mike. Go talk to Mike. I'm thinking, Mike who? <laughs> Michael Jordan. Oh, wow, okay. And if you'd like to come back and meet him with me, great. Now, had I not, if I had been intimidated by being on the floor and not being confident in myself, even though, even though my classmate's father was the uh, vice president of the Magic, and he knew everyone in that arena, and everyone in all my classmates were so enthralled by him, um, if I wasn't confident, Stuart Scott would have came over to me. And at that time, Stuart Scott was pretty major. So everyone was like, oh, my God, Mark talking to Stuart Scott. So if I wasn't that confident and giving him out the time and talking to him and looking to make a high contact, acting like, I was, like I've was been there before, I wouldn't have been Michael Jordan. I wouldn't have had that opportunity, right? So you want to make sure that when you're talking to people that you're confident and your body language is, is, is one and such. I know that it's intimidating, especially for men. We don't like making eye contact. We think that that does something to our manhood or something. I don't know. But, guys, you've got to make eye contact. And with other men, too. There's nothing wrong with you looking at another man. Women, there's nothing wrong with you looking at another man or a woman. In the eye. Make eye contact. That makes that is so much. And most men sometimes, we, we, we sometimes look away from a woman's eyes and look other places. And don't do that. <laughs> look into their eyes. Don't act like you want to talk to them. Really want to talk to them. And if you start talking to people, making eye contact, it's going to be so much easier for you when you meet people and talk to people in general. Even if it's someone on the street and that's, um, that's, um, you know, on a street corner, or if it's someone that's uh, your professor, you want to always make sure that you make eye contact with people, okay? The other thing is, when you're talking, you want to share, you know, with people. You want to, you know, also, uh, you know, the most critical part of a conversation that provides some substance, you want to listen, um, and then you want to sum up what you spoke about. And all of these are significant. It's very important. Um, you know, one of the, one of the, another great example is, uh, I was talking to, uh, one of my professors. And we were, I was listening to them talk to another colleague about some of the things that they're doing to, um, to, 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 in order to, to, to hire other faculty at the university. And I started listening to them talk, and I listened and listened. And at the end of the conversation, when it was a pause, I summarized it. I said, so you're saying this is what you need to do in order to get faculty at this university. They're like, yes, you listen, you listen really well. You know, you, you're a good listener. And the thing is, you want to give people the, 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 the opportunity to know a little bit about, you know, what you're doing um, and know a little bit about, you know, who you are. You don't want to get into a situation where you're not listening to people and you're not summarizing, you know, what's going on, okay? Um, one of the things I can share with you, too, is that a lot of people consistently are like, well, how do you maintain these relationships? 
How have you managed to retain your relationships over the year? And what happens is when I meet people, one of the most important things that you do when you meet people is that you want to make sure that you, 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 you send them an email that same night. I don't believe in waiting 10 days, 20 days and all that. My thing is, as soon as you meet the person, you, you want to make sure that you email them and you want to get in contact with them. Um, because if you don't, you're going to miss because you might be traveling or something. You might miss the opportunity to email them and a month or two goes by and you're like, oh my God, I didn't email them. I didn't con- con- communicate with them. But one of the things that I've been able to do and I've been fortunate about is that when you don't talk to someone, like when I don't talk to Jody for four or five months, I can pick up where I left off with her because I left, I left her in good standing. So you always want to leave people in good standing when you're talking to them. You don't want to be, ever be in a situation where you're talking to someone and then you know you don't have a relationship with them and then you don't talk to them for months and months and years at a time and then they're, they're out of play, out of mind and they, they forget who you are. So you want to make sure that you Keep that, that, that integrity, number one. You, just, you know, when you say you're going to do something, you do it, your word is your bond. Um, you want to make sure that you uh, maintain that, that, that sense of, you know, having a good personality and being confident and being uh, personable. And you do those kind of things, people are going to remember you. Um, I'll give you another example. My very first job that I got um, coming out of graduate school was working for Reebok. And I didn't get that job because I applied for it. I got that job because of the relationship. None of the jobs that I've had in my career, I've ever applied for. And again, that's not something to brag about. It's, it's, it's happened because I utilize the relationships that I've had in my life. And I'll tell you what happened to me. When I was in graduate school, I got maybe four or five job offers from different different um, sports organizations. And they were not in areas that I wanted to work in. And I had met this gentleman who was the director of marketing for Reebok. And one of the guys that mentored me took me to this event. And I met all these different sports executives and I kept in contact with them, right? But I met the guy that was director of marketing at Reebok. Not the vice president, not the CEO, not any of that. She was the director of marketing. And most people, when they meet people, they think that person is the CEO. That's the decision maker. Or that person is more important. No, guys. Just because a person has a title does not mean that, they, that they're the be-all, end-all. Because they can lose their job tomorrow. And they're still going to be that human being. So you are a person first, and you are a brand second. Remember that. You are a person first, and that company does not define you. But don't get caught up meeting people thinking, oh, my God, that's the CEO, that's the vice president, that you never know, right? But get in contact with this guy. This was in 1996, right? At the time, email was like getting tickets to a Jay-Z concert. It was a big deal, right? So email was a big deal back in 1996, if you, some of you are young enough to remember that. Um, so I kept in contact with this gentleman named Pete Rogan, the director of marketing at Reebok. When it was time for me to, uh, to uh, get a job, he and I have been emailing each other for a year. He lived in Boston at Reebok. I live in Amherst, Massachusetts. He began to start inviting me to Reebok events. He invited me to come to, to go to Boston Sophie games, the Boston Red Sox games, meeting his family. We did this for a year. Now, one time that I asked him for a job, I didn't ask him for a hookup. I just liked his personality. I liked what he was about. And every time I would give him updates about my, my life, my family, he was the same. He never bragged about who he was. There was no Google back then, so I didn't Google him, you know, so I just got to know him. So when it was time for me to get my job, I remember reading Newsweek magazine. I was at the barbershop, and I read about Michael Jordan retiring for the, I don't know, for the 15th time, right? And I'm reading an article, and it's a quote from him. And I'm thinking, what does he have to do with Michael Jordan? He's the director of marketing. Well, it turns out it didn't say director of marketing. It says senior vice president of Reebok. He became senior vice president within a year of me knowing him. And I had no idea that this guy was a vice president because he never talked about it, right? He was testing my character, I guess, at the time. So I called him on the telephone and congratulated him. And he said, Mark, I would like for you to work for me at Reebok. And I want you to report to me. And the reason why he said I want you to work for me is because for the past year, I like your demeanor. I like your, your, your integrity. I like that you're personable. Every time I introduce you to people, you are kind. You are well-spoken. You're well thought of. You, you know how to say thank you and please. And you've never asked me for anything. That's how my career got started. Now, that sounds like a cinderella but it's really not, guys. It's really about getting to know people and not talking to people because of what they have, but talking to people because of what they're about. And the more you share about who you are, and the more you give more information about you other than your GPA, and where you went to school and that kind of stuff and start talking about your personal life, maybe. Hey, yeah, I come from New Jersey. Um, I'm coming to four brothers, you know, three brothers, two brothers, and a sister. Um, I, my father was a professor. Um, my mom was in marketing. And you want to talk about yourself so people can share. Because when I met this guy, I had no idea I'd meet his family. So 
So again, when you're talking to people, don't think about the future, like, oh, I want to go and have, have a relationship with this person. Just get to know people because you don't know where that relationship is going when you're talking to people. Get to know people, okay? Um, and the other, the last thing is, too, is um, you want to make your round, okay? When, you, when you're about to leave, you just don't want to walk out and leave because it's time to go or you think that you're tired. Go around the room and make your round slowly. You know, go around the room and because those people that you already met, they already remember you. And they might be talking to somebody new. I remember about remembering names and being confident and smiling. Walk around that room and make your last round like it's the last, like you're about to leave. But you, you want to make sure you say goodbye to everybody. And um, when you say goodbye to everybody, you want to make sure that you're going to keep, let them know you're going to keep in contact with them. But also ask them, what's the best way to keep in contact with them? You know, when you get that business card, a lot of times you take the card and you get it and you put it in your pocket and you say, oh, my God, I'm going to email that person. And they don't email you back and you get all frustrated. And then you wait again and email them back. They'll email you back again and you just don't want to do anything with them anymore. Don't do that. Okay. I tell people when you email somebody and they don't email you back, be patient. They might want to spam. Okay. Um, they might not be the best person to email. So that's why you ask people. And I've learned this over the last few years myself. I said, you know, that's the, that's the best, that's one of the great tips is to ask them, what is the best way to keep in contact with you? Okay? Because if you ask them that question, they might tell you, they might surprise you and say, you know what? I give you my card and it has my business line. I don't need the answer. Let me give you my cell phone. That happens a lot. Okay? More than you think. But when you go back and you ask them for that ask, it's, hey, you know, um, well, well, tell me a little bit more about how, how do I keep in contact with you. It was great talking to you. And that person that you're talking to might be talking to a new person. They might introduce you. Hey, this is Mark. You know, I met earlier. What a great personality he has. Hey, Mark, where are you? what do you do? Hey, I do this. Hey, and what do you do? I do this. Oh, really? Okay. You know, I'm about to leave, but you have a card. I'd love to keep in contact with you. Just simple like that. Quick, a quick conversation like that. Because even though it sounds like, you know, I don't know anybody in this room. I don't know how to communicate with people. You do, you know, you know the room because you've met a lot of people already. The other thing is there might be someone in that room that you haven't met yet that the person that you already know is talking to, and you say, can you introduce me to that person? Oh, yes, I know Jody. I know her very well. Let me take you over and introduce her. A lot of times what happens is, especially when you're a student and maybe when you get out of school, is that people like to compete. Everyone wants to compete, and they think they're competing against other people. You're not. You're competing against yourself. So it takes nothing for you to go and introduce yourself, introduce somebody else to that person. For example, I remember when I was coming out of school, one of my classmates was really big in accounting. Now, one of the big accounting firms was coming after me and asking me would I like to work in their department. Of course not. I'm, not a, I'm, an, I'm a marketing guy. But I knew my classmate, Libby, was a big person in, in, in accounting. So I could have kept that to myself or I could have introduced her to this accounting firm. And I did. I took her introduced her. This is my classmate. She's a whiz in accounting. And you know what? Not only did she get the job, now she's senior vice president of Bank of America in their accounting department. Had she not had had that opportunity at the beginning when I introduced her, um, or didn't introduce her at all, would she still be a VP somewhere? She probably would at some point because she's talented. But the point is, you don't know how you can help somebody else out. So when you're walking around that room, you know, you want to give them that impression and say, hey, you know, I enjoyed you. You know, um, I'm definitely going to email you. Or I'm definitely going to call you. And I look forward to keeping in contact with you. Um, and you basically, you want to give people around that room the impression that you enjoyed yourself, that you enjoy life, that you listen really well. It doesn't matter if you're an introvert or if you're an extrovert. The bottom line is you want to give the impression to people that you enjoy them. You want to give the impression that you, that you're a happy person, that you're not angry and, and, and bitter and frustrated and jilted by a lot of things. You want to give the people that you just met this opportunity to say, hey, look, I'm, um, I'm, I'm who I am, and I'm looking forward to being with you at any given time. And, um, again, I think the biggest thing that I want you guys to remember is not to be a robot. You know, there's nothing worse than you walking around a room and you're, you're, you're telling everyone your bio. Not everybody, people aren't inspired by that. They're not inspired by that at all. People want to know who you are. And don't be afraid to share, okay? That's not something that, 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 you're being, that, that we as people are being taught, that to share who you are. Um, about a month ago, I was talking to a class at West Virginia, and um, I asked a young lady, um, you know, about 50 students in the class, and I asked her, I said, you know, um, tell, me about, tell, me about, tell me a little bit about yourself. And she started telling me her GPA <laughs> and telling me about, you know, how she wants to graduate and get a good job. And I said, no, who are you? What do you do for fun? And she looks at me like, well, why do you want to know that? Because that, that'll help me in my conversation. And I'm like, you know, you know, and, I, and then I use another example, and I said, you know, um, 
you know, do you have a boyfriend? And they're like, oh, you know, they're looking like, what does that have to do with anything? I have everything to do with it. But you met your boyfriend. Did you walk up to him and say, let's have a baby? Did you say, let's get married? No. You got to know him, right? You, I said, why, why would you not say that to someone when you met the person? It said, because he sounds creepy. Why else? Because you want to get to know the person. It's the same way when you meet someone. You want to develop a relationship with that person. If I didn't build my relationship with Pete Roby and I didn't give him my resume and my steps from day one, that's all I talked about with my resume, then I would have never gotten to the point where I've gotten in my career, right? I wouldn't have got that first job at Reebok. But when I was personable and started talking about who I am, when you start talking about things and talking about, you know, what you're about, people are paying attention, you know? And instead, just want to ask you. You know, someone asks you, you know, tell me what you're doing with yourself. You know, what are you, what are you working on? He said, you know, someone wants to ask me, Mark, what are you working on? Well, I'm working on my doctorate at West Virginia University. Um, I just finished writing a book called The Art of Network. Um, I, I travel around the country. Um, and I just came back to see my mother. My mother's not well. She's in the hospital. Oh, really? Where, where, she, where are you guys from? We're from New Jersey, but she and my dad lives in Augusta. That could start a conversation. Oh, Augusta. I know Augusta. Yeah, I used to live over there. Why well, know someone over there? I mean, your conversation, as you get to know people, start talking to people, and you're personable, people can start communicating with you in a way that is, that is unique to you and also where you can feel comfortable and confident about your environment. And I tell people, I can walk into any room right now and talk to anyone about anything that they're from because it's because I'm confident in myself and that took years of practice. It took starting out when I was a little kid, my mother and father letting me be who I was as a human being and taught me how to shake hands, look people in the face and do those kind of things. And that as you continue to, to meet people and you're confident and you, and you you go about your business and go about the world, the more confident you're gonna become. It's like practice. If you play sports, basketball or football or if you're in class and you're trying to learn how to do math or long you know division or something, you gotta practice. It's practice. Even when you're going to church or when you're walking down the street, talk to people. Say hi to people. That's practice for you networking. And networking is not about getting a job, guys. Networking is about connecting with people. So think about that when, you, when you're out there. Um, the other thing is when you're walking down the street um, and you're on campus or wherever you're at right now, just, just look at it maybe three times a week. Say something to someone that you've never said hi to before. Because except you're on college campuses. Because people walk by each other on college campuses every day, and they may not look like you, and you had your head buried in your phone, tweeting or texting or something, and you, you don't think to say hi to that person that's in front of you every day, or someone in your class. You don't know who that person is. You don't know what kind of relationship they have. You don't know who they are. And I remember I was speaking at Prairie View about a month ago, and I'm at Prairie View University in Texas, at the historically black college, and there was about 80 kids in the classroom, and I asked them, who in here wants to work in sports and entertainment? And uh, they said people raised about 75% of people raised their hands. I said, how many guys in here have a relative or someone in your family that works in sports and entertainment? About 40% of people raised their hands. And I said, keep those hands up. I said, how many guys knew that, that there are people's parents in here or there are people already associated with the industry? And maybe about two hands went up. Because they are so busy focused on competing with each other and not focused on getting to know each other, right, and finding out what people do. So I went one by one. I gave about 10 people an opportunity to say where they're from and how much, you know, what, where they're from and, and what they're trying to do. And basically, people started saying, hey, I want to work in, in, in uh, work for, um, you know, one, one guy said he worked for his mother and father, and then Holy Holyfield is, is his um, godfather. Another person said that uh, Usher is, is, is his uncle. Another person said that uh, that they work with uh, Ellie Reed and Babyface. And I'm looking like, how many guys knew that about each other? And no one knew that because people sit in classrooms or sit amongst each other every day and they don't get the chance to know people. I said, now, how many of you guys know that there are people in this room that probably could connect you to people that you probably didn't know you could connect to and you've been in this class all semester and you never knew it? So get to know people. Don't be afraid to, to be yourself. Always smile. You know, there's times that you're not going to want to smile. I get that because I don't smile every day either. But when you're in an environment and you have the opportunity to meet people, you don't know who you're meeting. You don't know, you know, you don't know what people are going through. So you want to always make sure that you're, that you, that you convey a sense of uh, confidence and you want to make sure that you are not afraid to, 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 to be personable and that you are open to, to um, letting people inside and letting people know who you are a little bit. And the more you talk about, about, about your, your, your experiences and the more you talk to people and become engaging, the, the easier it is for you to begin this networking journey. So I want to say thank you very much for speaking today. Networking is really important, as Mark was speaking about, that it doesn't matter if you are 
uh, you know, five or 105. Um, if you want something done and you need to find out where to get it or how to do it or who's doing it, you need to be able to talk to people. So communication is key. And one of the things you brought up earlier in the question that came up, Mark, is you said that you want to be able to show people that you care. And what one of our listeners in the audience asked is, you know, what are some ways to show that you care, um, you know, or to be engaged or actively show that you're listening to someone, um, you know, even if it's just casually, not that you particularly go someplace to network, but how do you show that you care? Yeah, great. Good question. Um, one of the things is, um, perfect example, the other day um, I was uh, sitting amongst some people and I, I didn't know them at all. And I just happened to be sitting at, at, a, at a student center at, at West Virginia. And I heard a parent um, talking to their, their child and their, their significant other and about, you know, how the people here are not giving good service and, and I'm upset because of this and that and the other. And I listened to this for a good 15 minutes. So I, I walked over to them and said, hi, how you doing? My name is Mark Williams. And they're like, hey, how are you? I've been going up to my doctor up here and I heard you complain about certain things. I said, you know, um, how can I help you? I said, because I, I know a number of people here and I would love to see what I can do to help you with um, facilitating anything that you, you're going through. And they're like, oh my God, that is so nice of you. No, you know, we've been here and we haven't gotten this kind of service. We haven't gotten that kind of service. And that, that one gesture of me communicating with them where I could have not said anything, and they could have had a really awful experience there and not want to send their child here. And the great thing was that I took them over to housing. I didn't know these people but I wanted them to have the same experience I had at West Virginia. <laughs> so I was empathetic towards them. And that's an extreme situation. You're not going to always do that with people. But if you're at a cocktail party, you want to make sure that you are listening to what people are talking about, if it's their cause or if they are talking about, you know, some issue that they're, that they're involved with. You know, you, you, you don't have to nod, nod your head like you agree with it, but you, you know, hey, yeah, I, I, I think that's pretty cool what you're doing. If someone says, yeah, I volunteer and work with the pink holes, you know, that's what I do for fun. And I do that philanthropically. And you're like, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. Tell me more about it. And when you show that you're interested in what they're saying, and you might not want to do everything that they're saying, but if you're so interested interest in what they're saying, that shows, hey, you're being empathetic. Wow. That, you know, that person that's listening to me. Even if they, even if they, even if they, even if you don't want to do whatever they think they're doing, you want to show that, hey, that's pretty cool. Or, hey, you know, tell me more about it. Because you want to give people, people like to feel important. People like to feel, they like to have their ego stroke. And that doesn't mean that they're egomaniacs, but we all like people to listen to us. We all want some people to, to value what we're saying. So if you're talking about something that's, that's a dear and near and dear to your heart, and people are just ignoring it, and, you, and you're like, okay, I just said a lie, and no one's paying attention. <laughs> but at the same time, you want to you do the same thing. You want to think about how you will want to be treated. So that's okay. one of the steps. That's what you're like. Yeah, no, I think always being interested, even if you're, it's not something you're interested in, you might not care an uh, ounce about golf or football, and but that's what jazzes the person that's going to get you a job or get you the information that you need, you should be interested because you have to bring those two, those two things up. The other question that came up um, a few times is in live networking situations, since often people do meet at receptions or functions, um, that have food, beverages, et cetera, you know, how do you balance out, you know, um, talking to people, um, you know, if someone approaches you and you have food in your hand, and, you know, how do you handle that professionally? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, you, you, you have to play walk up to you, you got a big chicken bone in your hand, in your mouth, right? So right. You, uh, <laughs> you, you kind of, you know, again, it's one of those situations, a lot of people when you're talking to them on the phone and they're eating, like, well, let me call you back, I'm eating, and I'm thinking, if someone calls me and I'm eating, I, I can talk. I said it does not interfere with my eating time. If it's something I really want to talk about. But I think that when you're walking up to someone and they're eating, they don't digest their food for a second. Don't just walk up to somebody and, you know, they got their eating and they're trying to digest their food. Pay attention to people when they're eating. Um, I think that um, when you're at an event and you have alcohol there, and, um, you know, obviously it's a casual event, I personally don't drink alcohol. But if people want to drink, that's fine. But I tell women especially, be careful about know the alcohol that you consume because sometimes you can be drinking and you could start getting a little tipsy. I'm not saying women in general, but I'm saying that if a woman gets, is getting drinking and they're always, you know, drinking, and it's the same with the guy. If a man or a woman is drinking and they're drinking too much and they've already left a great impression with everybody and then they're drinking a little too much and getting obnoxious, then people are paying attention to that. 
I was they weren't a, concerned about what they're doing. It's more or less someone, if, when people come up to them and they're the ones with the food by, you know, chance in their mouth, not so oh, much if approach oh, them. Okay. Well, if someone, was, if someone comes up to you and you have food in your mouth and, and you're, they want to talk to you, then you stop eating. You know, and, and stop and listen to what they're saying. Hopefully, you're next to a table. You can put your food down. But if not, you can hold the food in your hand and put your hand up for one second. Excuse me. I'm, I'm going to digest this. Or, hi, how you doing? But let's just let's digest the food, but don't don't stop eating. Um, and if, if you're really eating the food and they're walking up to you and like you're sitting down and it's at a big event and you're sitting down, well, if you're standing up, you know, put the food down for a second. Because the food's gonna be there when they're when they're when they're gonna leave, you know. So she'll have to eat it right away. But if you are between bites, digest your food and then give them that that one that little one finger up and say, hey, you know, um, I, I wanted to talk to you, but I'm digesting my food, <laughs> All right? So don't be afraid to put your food down and have a conversation with someone because you, when you just stand there and you're eating and you just act, and you don't you body we talk about body language. And you kind of have your body tilted to the side, like you don't want to be bothered. Then people are probably not going to come up and talk to you. But if you stand, like with your, you know, stand where you are erect and you're looking around and you act comfortable, people will come up and talk to you. And then because you feel you're, you're inviting them in, but if you have your food in your hand and you don't act like you don't want to talk to them, then they're, they're you miss you miss out on an opportunity of whoever that person might have been. So be conscious of that. And um, if you think someone's about to approach you, put your food down for a second and let them come up to you and talk to you. So this next question kind of is right on time. Um, it kind of can hit both ways. It's the idea that, you know, body language can often, you know, how, how do you control your body language um, when you're not, when you're kind of disengaged? You've been talking to someone, things seem cool, and then it hits a point where, you know, we all have cultural diversity, other issues, someone might say something wrong, and now you're kind of turned off. How do you kind of either show yeah. that so that you can walk away or how do you continue to not show that and continue to engage knowing that, you know, this is an HR director or someone that you need. So on both sides, how do you stay engaged when you really don't want to? <laughs> and how do you walk away and save face when someone may, might have offended you? All right. You know? um, you want to go to Denzel Washington uh, School for Acting for that? No, I'm kidding. Uh, actually, you want to... Um, one of the things that I've learned is that, um, you know, there are people, I was in a situation a month ago, two months ago, and it was a person who I'm not fond of was having a conversation about something. Uh, and I was in the middle of listening to that person and I, I, I was not feeling what they were saying, but I said, I stayed there and I smiled and I was like, I, I nod my head, like I was of approval, listening. Okay. I, I, I hear you. Really? Okay. And you, you listen to them and you give that impression that you're paying attention. One of the things that you, whether the person you're superior or not, or just just a regular person you meet, you never want to give anybody the impression that it's okay for you to be upset and, and not happy with someone, but you don't want to ever leave in a situation and like, you know, I don't want to be around you, get away from me. So you don't want to give people that impression, even people you don't like. Um, what you want to do is give the impression that I heard you, I got you, and give that nod of approval, like, okay, you know, I, 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 I understand, okay, and we can talk about that another time. And, you know, hey, you know, it was great talking to you. Um, you know, maybe we can talk about, we can talk another time. Do you want to find a way to get out of the situation without coming across like, you know, I'm totally offended? Or if someone's talking and you're like really disengaged, smile and kick your head. I know it's, it, it, unless you were standing there for an hour or something, <laughs> it can't be that painful. But if it is painful where you don't want to be around them, continue to nod and, you know, right between their other sense, you know, hey, you know what? I, I see someone over there. I got to talk to. I, I'll, I'll see you in a little while. A little while can mean an hour or two. A little while can mean never that evening. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you want to give the you want to give yourself an out by being engaged, but at the same time making eye contact, or it seems like you're making eye contact with something else around you, and say, you know what? I enjoy talking to you. You know, I, I got to go right now, but I, I really want to continue this conversation when you really don't really want to finish it, <laughs> but you just want to get out of there. Okay, so this is a great question. I call it networking double dutch. When, um, you know, two other people are talking and you want to get in on the conversation, how do you, you know, sometimes people say they feel awkward getting into a conversation because, you know, you and I might be engaged, Mark, in a conversation. One person might want to talk to you. How do they volley in, get into the conversation, move me out, or catch your eye, or, you know, 
what's the best way? And I call it double dutch because you got to dip in, dip out. You got to figure out the right timing not to get stung. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, th- I think that you you want to you want to always listen to everything that people are saying. Um, you want to always make sure that you can piggyback off of what someone is saying. Um, you know, for example, um, I was um, at a at an event about probably about a year ago, and we were it was a major league baseball event, the Varsity Summit. And I remember listening to two major league baseball executives. They were talking to each other, both vice presidents of HR, and just having this conversation. And they were just talking about the students that, that they were meeting that day. And I just listened to them and I said, hey, excuse me for a second. How are you guys doing? I, 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 just, I didn't mean to, 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 uh, to um, interrupt your conversation, but I, I was really fascinated with what you were talking about because I agree 100 percent that there needs to be more, um, you know, students need to be much more uh, approachable and, and less and, 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 not, and more confident about this and that. And I said, you know, I, I saw the same things you saw. And I, and I remember, and I can, and, and you want to give that, you, you want to make sure that you're, you're, you're on cue, but you're also not disrespecting, you know, whoever's around you, because uh, they might be in their own little world and you start walking around. But you want to kind of make sure that you can weave yourself into the conversation if, if it's applicable. But if it's not the, the group of people that you're interested in, it might be another group of people that are saying something that you, that you know about your past, that you're knowledgeable about. You want to get a few, two presidents of a company talking, you know, that might not be, the right situation to start talking to them and jumping in their conversation. That just may not work. But if you're talking to, you see some other people talking amongst themselves about something that you can relate to, or something that you that you're that you're that, you know you're familiar with, you want to provide your your thoughts to it. Um, you know, you could be at a, at a concert and you hear people talking about, wow, Jill Scott was amazing tonight. They're like, yeah, Jill, that's my girl. And you're like, hey, you know what? I heard you talking about her too. Yeah, I remember her first album, and I went to her first album release party. Um, I don't know if you guys went to that. But, you know, let me tell you, she's really a personal person. I love the way she talks. I love the way she does that. What do you, what do you guys think? Because if you, when you're in an environment and people are talking about something that, that you all are familiar with, it's easy for you to jump into conversation, but do it in a way that is authentic and real and not in, 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 intrusive. But, it's, but you also want to look at the people that you're talking to and see if they are friendly, if they're friendly demeanor or if they're open to you potentially even coming into conversation. But you want to listen really closely before you start jumping in um, so that you can feel like you're part of the conversation. Yeah, no, and you, this, uh, this came up a couple, the next question came up a couple times as well, but I'm going to kind of put them together. Um, basically, you, which is true, you say to be, all of us who network a lot and have made a career out of it, um, say to be, you know, open about yourself and networking, but, you know, where do you draw the line? Because sometimes, if you, you know, tell people, oh, I am single or I have, you know, two boys at home or whatever, could be used against you maybe if you were looking for work. So, you know, right. does what you say in different arenas make a difference? Is there a litmus test? Is there a line that you say shouldn't be drawn? Like, what, what, what's your what's your advice on that? I, I, think, I think it's one of those things, it's almost like you're going to church, you know, there's certain things that you're not going to say in church that you might say at a party, right? <laughs> so you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta think about it. If someone's asking you, let's say you're at an event and there's an HR director and it says, "Hey, tell me about yourself. You know, um, where, what, have you been, what have you been doing the last five years? I've been working here and working there. Hey, well, what do you do for fun? Well, you know, I get between, you know, work, I get a chance to do this, this, and this because I'm really active with my college chapter at school. Um, you know, and if you're married, you know, me, and my husband, and my wife, we, or my partner, we do. Blah 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 blah, and you know, and and uh, you know, and if the person you know asks, if they ask you do you have kids, you you tell them. Sometimes you don't have to volunteer that if you don't feel comfortable talking about it. You got to go by the comfortability of that person you're talking to. You also want to make sure that when you're communicating to the person with the, with that person that you mm-hmm. that you that you give and take thing. If they're sharing a little bit about their thoughts and they say, hey, you know, I'm you know, uh, me and my boys we this and that, and I'm you know I'm happily married or. Or I'm divorced, or whatever you want to say. You don't want to get too, too personal when you meet someone, um, unless it's, again, you have a great chemistry with that person. Because everybody you meet, you're not going to always have the best chemistry with. You know, when I met the guy at Tupopi, I had an amazing chemistry the minute that I met him. I didn't have the same chemistry with the president of, of Nike that I had with him. So it was a different kind of chemistry, you know? Um, so you got to, you got to, it's like, it's, like a, it's like a dance. You kind of want to, you know, <laughs> dance with the person and kind of get an idea, give and take when you're talking to them to find out more about who they are. But you don't want to share too, too much, especially if you're a woman 
two and you're on an event and there's multi men there and you're like, you let everybody know I'm single. You don't need to let everybody know you're single. That's not necessary. Um, it could come up, but that's not the point of you talking to people. But if you get to know people, you can share with them based as a, on a need to know basis. And that really should be coming up if you're at an event anyway. Hey, are you single? I mean, that could come up in the flow of the conversation, but you don't have to just walk up to someone and say, hey, are you single? And, you know, I'm not at this event. I just want to get, get involved with someone. No. <laughs> you, you, you kind of want to, you know, it's like a dance. And there might be something that you'll say to one person that you may not say to another person because they might not have the same spirit that you have, right? Um, so so that someone in here said that they want to submit a resume. Yes. Yeah. And I said that it's posted there on the screen right now where they can send yeah. their resume. When they, when they, in general, when they meet people, when instead of going to trying to find out about a job, ask someone that they work at that company so they know someone there. When I work in corporate, I get about two or 300 uh, uh, resumes a week. We want to be posting for jobs. I'm not going to be looking at these resumes, and I'm a nice person. And imagine if someone who's not a nice person, they're going to throw it away. You, you, if you know someone, it's much easier to make that introduction. I was at the University of South Carolina about two months ago, and a young lady you know, wanted me to help her get a job somewhere. And we talked for a long time, and we, get, we got to know each other, and I talked to her, and I talked to her coaches or whatever. And she, I, I said, okay, I'm going to do this. But we continue to talk. I want to introduce you to these three people here. And I, I, I didn't say you're going to get a job with them. I just want you to meet them, right? So she goes, and instead of her saying, hey, Mark, can you make a, I already made the introduction. I'm never going to, I'm never, if I know someone, I'm not going to just say, here's their email. I want to introduce that person to you. Jody and I, we do this a lot. I introduce that person. I have a friend at Under Armour. I introduce Jody to her. And I said, this is my friend Jody. This is what she does. And I said, Jody, this is my friend Jeanette. This is what she does. So when you do that, it's a much more friendlier interaction. It's easier. So when I did this for this woman, she decides that instead of saying, hey, Mark, how do I respond to this person? She took it upon herself because this is what people are coached on. And let me send my resume to this person. No, you don't know that person yet. All they wanted to know, they already have a great endorsement from me about you. So be patient. Just say, hey, it was great meeting you. I would love to set up a time to have a conversation with you. Get to know that person. Right? Don't just start sending your resume to people because because you think they have a job for you. You know, have somebody introduce you to that person and get to know that person first. And we're winding down. This is the final question, so think of it short and sweet and succinct, and then leave with a word of advice. Um, that most folks on this call and most of the people in the Urban League network are quite. Uh, accomplished and have great personalities, but there's always a few of us that are introverts. And for those people who are a little bit more shy or maybe the live interaction isn't the best, what are some either, you know, some tips for doing things that might make it more comfortable when you're live and some tips for also maybe online or other mo modes of networking? Okay, I think the other, one of the biggest things that I've learned, you know, whether it's college students or a seasoned professional like some of the Urban League folks that are on the line, um, is that uh, everyone's personality is different. You've got an introvert or somebody that may not want to divulge information in front of people that's an extrovert. You, you, you get there, the person's information you're interested in talking to, um, maybe have a short conversation with them, see how what's the best way to keep in contact with them, keep, keep it short and sweet, and an email, make it short and sweet. Hi, my name is Susie. I had the opportunity of meeting you today. Um, you know, you said some really, really powerful things, but I love to see if there's an opportunity to talk to you. Um, this is this is the best way to communicate with me. What is, is there a good time where you and I can have a conversation? Um, you know, maybe you go to LinkedIn, you you, you uh, request my LinkedIn. Uh, you can see them on Twitter, request them on Twitter. There's nothing wrong with that. But you also want to make sure you let people know how you met them or why you met them. And then at the same time, that person may not know that you're an introvert or maybe because you had to rush out because you had to get to an event or something. You can always get someone's card and make it short, sweet, space. It was awesome meeting you. I, I'm not going to have a lot of time to talk to you right now because I'm whatever you're going through or maybe you're an introvert. But I would love to know the best way to keep in contact with you. Email, great. Email them immediately and you tell them, hey, I would love to keep in contact with you. Um, can we talk soon? And I think that can alleviate you the stress of you standing there for hours at a time at an event um, versus if you're, um, you know, getting a chance to, to, to meet someone for the first time and you don't know what to say to them. So you don't always have to stand in the event for hours at a time. You can go there, get in and out, get the cards you need and want, and then communicate with them that way one-on-one -on -one so you don't have to be amongst a whole lot of people if that's how you're feeling. Or the best way, to, again, is to follow up with that person and ask them what's the best way to communicate with them. 
So any final tips that you would tell your younger self, Mark, about networking that, you know, something if you look back on now that if you had known sooner rather than later would have gotten you first? I think that the most important thing that I would have told myself, you know, 15 years ago when I started in the industry is to be patient um, and, uh, and, and and make sure that you your word is your bond, making sure that you uh, have integrity. Um, and there's nothing worse than you say you're going to do something, um, whether it's a job or following up with someone and you don't do it, and then someone sees you again and, and they call you out on it. That's happened to me before. You know, in spite of all the wonderful things that's happened in my career, I, I've, I've done that before where I didn't follow up with someone or I didn't do what I was supposed to do. So the most important thing is is to make sure that you take care. It's like take it's like if you go to the gym and work out and then you go home and eat devil dogs, that just contradicts everything you just did. So work out with yourself. So when you go to an event, you know, that's, that's the gym. You know, when you want to nourish your body, that's the email, right? So you want to make sure that you follow up with people, that you have integrity, and that you um, make sure that you your word is your bond. And um, I think if you do that and you continue to maintain positive relationships with people, uh, you can continue to keep building. And don't, and never be afraid to help other people out and to introduce other people to other people because that's a blessing um, when you do that. You become more blessed when you do that. When you introduce other people to more people, and it's not that you're doing it for, you know, because you want to get a blessing pressed upon you. You do it because it's the right thing to do. That's why we're here. We're here to help each other. Any opportunity that I can get to introduce Jody or my friends to other people that I think can help them, I do that because that's what we're here for. So don't keep your relationships so guarded to yourself. Share them with people, especially people that you think can need help with it. No, so Mark, thank you so much for sharing with us today. And I just want to remind those on the phone, every, a lot of folks always ask, yes, you will receive a copy of the audio and the presentation along with a link to a survey. Uh, we would really appreciate any feedback there from you. And want to let you know that on our next part of the Urban League digital career success series is does your resume resonate? And by resonate, often we are all told that we need to have one more than one version of our resume because depending on the kind of jobs and what you're looking for and what's important, um, Resonate is a new service that will help you formulate your resume in such a way that certain things, buzzwords, and what you really feel would be most important will stand out. So we hope all of you will join us for the next part of our series and looking forward to seeing those of you who might join us in Cincinnati. Mark Williams will be there live hosting and moderating our speed networking event on Friday, July 25th in Cincinnati, Ohio. For those of you coming, we hope you meet him in person and try to put some of his 10 tips to test. Have a great afternoon and a great day.